Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Find a living in fisheries. The UAS Fisheries Technology Program offers online study from anywhere in Alaska, plus labs and workshops in many Alaska towns. It's most likely a chum. Find your living without leaving where you are. Fisheries Technology from UAS. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. Uh, showtime's again, uh, 5.30 for APB RCS, and starting tonight, September 19th, KUAC there on 9.4, running the show, and 360 North is always at 7.30, and Alaska Public Media, 5 a.m. the following morning. And uh, go ahead and advance that for me. On the advisory warning map here, we've got actually advisories, watches, and warnings out. Uh, high wind warning here for the Eastern Alaska Range. Uh, for tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon, and tomorrow night, for uh, south, southeast winds gusting uh, over 60 miles per hour through there. Wind advisories back to the west there. And uh, high surf advisory still out here for the southwest coast and the back island there for the uh, eight, six to eight foot seas there and uh, bringing the tides up a little bit. And then right down here on the bottom of the chart, we've got a flood advisory out uh, for the Aleutian Range from Lake Iliamna to uh, Tuxigny Bay. And that includes Pile Drive Road. And that's for uh, in anticipation and anticipation of the heavy rains that are going to be moving into the area there uh, tomorrow and into tomorrow night. High wind warning out for the uh, East Anchorage area for Anchorage from uh, Turnagon Arm to uh, Palmer, Eagle River, and also for Western Prince William Sound. That's for uh, southeast winds and actually that kicks in tomorrow evening, an overnight Tuesday night there for southeast winds coming up uh, 30 gusts, 45 miles an hour, or 30 to 45 miles per hour for East Anchorage, uh, gusting maybe as high as 65. And for Trinidad Arm, higher elevations could see gusts anywhere running from 80 to possibly 100 miles per hour. And again, that's for tomorrow night. And then a high wind watch out for Cordova for later on for increasing winds that could exceed uh, 65, 70 miles an hour in gusts. So moving on to the satellite imagery, uh, starting in the east, then I'll work west. Uh, skies cleared out here across the southeast coast during the day. Started out with some clouds left over here, but as the day progressed, skies cleared, especially up here to the north, a weak disturbance just off the north coast there, tracking southeastward. Otherwise, uh, a lot of sunshine back uh, Prince William Sound and the coast here. A band of high clouds coming uh, eastward there across uh, Cook Inlet and then back to the northwest and more clearing. This area here now actually has moved up into Cook Inlet this afternoon and some higher stuff up through here. Clouds to the north there. Uh, also some clearing occurring up here along the Arctic coast as well with uh, much lighter winds. And then the uh, big low pressure area there holding back out over the northwest Bering Sea and this uh, good frontal system <laughs> pushing eastward. Uh, I guess uh, it's not looping but, it, oh there we go and coming across the eastern Aleutians with uh, nearly an inch of rain here falling at Akun Island there just uh, east of Unalaska Island and winds gusting uh, over 50 miles per hour, 40 to 50 mile per hour plus winds here from the Alaska Peninsula and along the southwest coast there, Cape Newnham, Cape uh, Ramanzov getting gusts in that uh, 40 to 60 mile per hour range this afternoon with rain 
all the way northward and then along this warm front up in this area here there is some uh, precipitation with that uh, as it spreads northward throughout the afternoon and uh, kicking it off again uh, there we go you can see the main uh, low center back to the west but it is tracking eastward here so that's going to keep conditions uh, pretty windy across the uh, Bering Sea and the Aleutians uh, for the next couple of days, small craft advisories out there throughout the time. And then uh, as this front comes eastward, if we could roll that again, uh, that'll bring uh, storms eventually, storm force winds tomorrow for Kodiak Island. And then that'll come into uh, Prince William Sound, I believe on the next day. And let's kick it one more to today's graphic. And uh, <laughs> let's see. A lot of clouds out here. I guess I've said that already. And if we could bounce it ahead to uh, one more. <laughs> Boy, some four loops uh, seems like a long time here when I haven't got control of the map advancer. And uh, there we go. Okay, there's the position of the front. Uh, roughly here uh, mid-afternoon, about 3, 4 p.m. Rain, wind here into the Alaska Peninsula, northward along the coast, as I mentioned. And then along this warm front, a little bit of moisture up there reaching the southern slopes of the Western Brooks Range and more extensive here, Seward Peninsula and the Bering Strait. Pretty fair conditions, southeast interior, as I mentioned, with some sunshine on down to the south. And for tonight, tonight's forecast, uh, front pushes eastward here, so winds rain let up along the southwest coast. Winds also diminish for the peninsula, but increase here. Uh, up along northeast. We're actually tonight pretty good for Bristol Bay. Could see some gale force winds tonight as that front pushes uh, inland, but uh, south to north flow here, rain increasing, Cuscombe Valley over to about the uh, western Alaska range and then spreading back to the northwest there, uh, kind of fanning out here, decreasing rain for the peninsula and then increasing rain up to the northwest, especially into the western Brooks Range and those southern slope areas, probably moderate amounts of rain falling, lighter rainfall and precipitation with that warm front there on the north side of the range out toward the Arctic coast. And uh, later on tonight, of course, clouds increase this evening overnight with some uh, rain beginning to uh, pick up here, western Cook Inlet on up into the western Susitna Valley areas. Uh, but the uh, bulk of the rain will stay west of the Alaska range through tonight. And then otherwise a pretty fair evening here, light winds and mostly clear skies, Eastern interior on down to the South, but a lot of cirrus beginning to spread into the area later on. Fair night, look for some patchy fog there for the Southeast coast in areas, low clouds and fog could develop with the light wind conditions and the clearing skies. Now for tomorrow, that, uh, wave here, a wave develops on the front, comes northward, and that really tightens up the gradient there coming across Kodiak Island, rain heavy at times, spreading northward throughout the day, and uh, the whole pattern gradually shifting eastward. So look for rain to spread into the Kenai Peninsula, possibly western Prince William Sound, and that'll continue north there. The front a little weaker up in this area here, uh, especially with the gradient and the precipitation won't be quite as heavy, but from the central interior, uh, Galena, Tanana, northward into the Koyukuk Valley, uh, rainfall, and then uh, gets kind of wrung out on the south side of the mountains there. So the eastern Arctic coast, north slope, look pretty dry with chances of rain, light rain, barrow back to the southwest. And again, just scattered showers now over the uh, southwest coast. Lots of showers and small craft advisory westerly winds for the Aleutians and uh, moving into Wednesday, that front Tuesday night, that's when the high wind warnings are out for the uh, South Central Alaska area and into Prince William Sound. Then the watch out for, I believe, Wednesday there as that front approaches the uh, Cordova area in the Eastern North Gulf Coast. That's when you'll get the strongest winds. So wind and rain beginning to uh, bear down on Yakutat. That low center comes northward and weakens as it pulls inland to about 990 millibars there. So the winds will really be dropping off along with the rain here for uh, South Central Alaska with some clearing from Kodiak Island back up towards uh, Kamishak Bay and onto the Northwest right through here, pretty good break. Not bad up there on the North Slope in the Arctic coast. The main low now uh, hanging back just south of St. Lawrence Island. So areas of rain 
uh, from the northern Bering Sea down along the southwest coast with this trough here, but winds uh, much lighter now than they were today. And still, small craft advisories for the Aleutians with showers and high pressure holding here over the southeast coast. Uh, but look for those clouds to increase uh, throughout the day, especially the mid and higher stuff. Looking at temperatures down that way this afternoon, mid-afternoon readings into the uh, near or into the lower 60s over areas mid 50s to the north, upper 50s here for the North Gulf Coast with 57 there at uh, Valdez, 60 degrees McCarthy, 59 Yakutat, and a 57 degree reading reached at Kenai, mid 50s for Kodiak Island, uh, 52 at Dulcana, and right around 50 here for the Tanana Valley from Northway to Fairbanks, uh, into the 50s for the Susitna Valley, and up uh, in the Tanana Valley, as I mentioned, well, uh, farther north, uh, heading up to the uh, Arctic coast, all in the 30s there, Anatovic stuck at 28, 44 though at Umiat Airfield, and mid 40s to lower 50s here across the northwest in the Seward Peninsula, 48 uh, there at McGrath, and 50s here over the southwest part of the state, and moving out west to the uh, next slide shows the uh, Lucians and the Bering Sea. We can see 51 at St. George Island, and 60 degrees there at, uh, let's see, Pilot Point was actually in the lower 60s today, as was uh, King Salmon, otherwise 50s all the way out to Shimia. And for the low temperatures for tonight, uh, teens and, or 20s to lower 30s here over the eastern interior, as you can see, uh, pretty well contrasted from east to west. Start getting into the uh, increasing clouds and increasing winds here, so 40s and as warm as the lower 50s down across the peninsula. And highs tomorrow uh, shaping up like this. Uh, lower 60s there in the Tanana Valley with those increasing downsloping winds and also up over the Yukon, upper Yukon Valley areas, upper 50s southeast coast. Same thing for the Aleutians and the Bering Sea and warming into uh, the 45 to 52 degree range there for the North Slope on out to the Arctic coast. For uh, flying weather, tomorrow we've got IFR here along and south of the Brooks Range to VFR, back to IFR in the central and western Arctic coast, extending through the Bering Strait down to St. Lawrence Island. Again, as that front lifts northward and comes inland, kind of breaking up here IFR on the increase there along the western Alaska Range. Over the southwest there, Kilbrook, Auckland Mountains, and the southern side of the Alaska Peninsula. And uh, ceilings visibility is coming down for the Kenai Peninsula and into Prince William Sound. Not too bad out over the Bering Sea for tomorrow afternoon. Uh, things uh, deteriorate a little bit here for the North Gulf Coast with IFR, uh, Kenai Peninsula, eastward to about Cordova, and also persisting here along the western Alaska Range. IFR, Southern Kodiak Island up to the Aleutian Range and that band of IFR is still along the south side of the Brooks Range there and that'll extend down to about St. Lawrence Island with improving conditions over the southwest coast. Uh, VFR breaking out there for the Yukon Cuscoam Delta, Alaska Peninsula, just some areas of marginal VFR expected out over the Bering Sea so that leaves the Aleutians in the VFR zone. For passes, uh, first off at Anatovic, uh, IFR lowest conditions will be found on the southern entrance. That forecast also applies to Adigan as well. And bouncing along Lake Clark and Merrill, deteriorating conditions, IFR uh, developing throughout the day. Same forecast for rainy, v marginal becoming IFR, windy, VFR becoming marginal. And Isabel, again, becoming marginal by the afternoon. And for Mentasta though, probably staying VFR throughout the day tomorrow and then maybe coming down tomorrow night or Wednesday, Tanita VFR becoming marginal. And for the, uh, looking at Portage, almost forgot that one, marginal VFR becoming IFR. Again, could be low IFR on the east side there tomorrow afternoon and more likely tomorrow evening. For Chilkoot and White, VFR, maybe for the next couple of days. And freezing levels here, uh, eight to town, eight to 10,000 feet over the Gulf of Alaska, sloping back to about 4,000 feet along the northwest coast there, and a general 4,000 foot freezing level condition out here over the Bering Sea. And uh, from there, looking at icing with the front coming inland and eastward, areas of possible widespread moderate here from the western Alaska Range down to Shelikoff Strait, Kodiak Island, and then uh, icing also northward along in advance of the front to the Brooks Range and then angling back to the northwest. For the uh, jet stream, 
and uh, here's southerly winds up to 100 knots there and again that's initially directing everything up to the north but again the whole pattern shifting eastward here so that ridge will build in more over the panhandle tomorrow night and the next day and that allow that front into south central Alaska and the central interior tomorrow night and into Wednesday. 9,000 foot uh, winds tomorrow pretty fierce here 50 knots across Kodiak Island at 9,000 feet and even stronger down here to the south. This is for early afternoon tomorrow and this whole area will be shifting northward as this low center tracks northward uh, roughly across King Salmon uh, later on tomorrow evening or early tomorrow evening and again pulling northward so even up here pretty windy for the uh, Brooks Range into the north slope at 45 knots light winds for the Panhandle westerlies at 30 for the Aleutians 3,000 feet uh, same pattern here south to north flow 50 to 55 knots and still pretty breezy right through the interior areas but lighter for the southeast coast west 30 to 35 for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians turbulence wise look for severe especially for small aircraft here Kodiak Island Again, this area advancing eastward, that'll extend up into northeast Bristol Bay, southern Alaska Range, and into the southern Kuskokwim Valley with moderate chop overspreading the Kenai Peninsula Cook Inlet right up to the Alaska Range, also the Brooks Range, back out uh, to the uh, northern Seward Peninsula. And after the uh, break of hangar flying, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. Good evening, I'm Harry Keeling, and on behalf of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and Alaska Public Media, welcome to Hangar Flying. Our guest this evening is Lieutenant Colonel Linda Thurove. Linda is an incredibly talented young woman with a very important job at Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson. She graduated from Notre Dame and ROTC. Early on in her Air Force career, she flew the T-6, and then the C-21, which is an uh, Air Force executive jet. Most of Linda's flying in the Air Force was in the C-17, Globemaster II. But she also had a very interesting job in international affairs. In that job, she traveled around Africa to Morocco, Jordan, and other ex exotic places. Linda, welcome to the show, and thanks for your service. Thanks for having me, Harry. Let's start with a fun question. What's it like flying the C-17 around? Uh, so much fun. Um, you wake up one day and, you know, your home station, say here at J Bear, you take off, the next thing you know you're in Japan. Take off the next day, you're in Hawaii. From there, um, you could be in Bahrain to Germany and coming back over the U.S. back to J Bear. And before you know it, within a week, you've gone the whole way around the world. It really shrinks the world down for you, flying the C-17 all around the world. Fun airplane to fly? So much fun, yes. It's, uh, it was built from the ground up as simply a military transport aircraft. So it can do amazing things. Tactical flying, it can fly into 3,000 foot dirt runways in the middle of nowhere. Air refueling, um, it's great. It's a great aircraft to fly. Wow. I, I, I... I did a little bit of air refueling in my career, but I gotta tell you, that's fairly challenging. Is it pretty challenging in the C-17? It is challenging, and I know when they're developing the C-17, um, they had to put some extra systems on it to make it more stable in uh, the air refueling envelope. But uh, with all the practice we get through the training, the training is great that they provide at Altus, and so the crews do get the training, and in the simulator too, where... Oh, you can do it in the simulator? Yeah, oh yeah, we can do oh, air refueling really? in the simulator too. Oh, well, my hat's off to you. Oh, thank you. So when you're out there on the real world and you're in the mission, you have to get the gas. Um, oh, you're able, uh, pilots are able to do it, so no how, problem. How long, how, what's the longest you, mission you could fly with air refueling? I mean, is it a crew rest thing? Uh, it probably would come down to a crew rest thing. I'm trying to think, in my memory, the longest one I heard of was 18 hours, double air refueling. Just take off, air refuel once, air refuel a second time before you actually go and land. Wow. But it does come down to a crew duty limitation. Yes. Well, there's so many questions I want to ask you. I didn't, but um, that's fascinating. Uh, what, what a beautiful airplane when you see it flying. Um, let's talk about your current job. Yes, sir. Um, what is it? What is it? And what do you do? I'm the third wing chief of safety. My job is to prevent, prevent future mishaps for the, within the third wing and at Almendorf. 
On my crew, my team, I have two flight or three flight safety officers, two weapon safety or three weapon safety managers, and two physiologists, so human factors analysis. What we do, we look at the programs we have at Third Wing. We look at the policies. Do we need to set more safety policies for the wing? Do we need to interpret higher headquarters safety policies? What risks should we be out there managing? Uh, promotion and education, and then assurance as well. Going out there, doing inspections of the different units, ensuring they're complying with the safety regulations. Wow. So I guess the proof is in the pudding. And from a historical standpoint, I think uh, I read that the accident rate in World War II was 44 per 100,000 hours. And I got to rem remember, Linda, in my career, some 20 or 25 years ago, in the fighter community anyway, it was right around 5 to 6 percent. And I think you told me the Class A, which is serious accident, rate right now in the Air Force is how much? One, one percent, yes. So Class A, either at least two million dollars worth of damage, loss of life. We're looking at one per 100,000 hours. Wow. So that's, that's the success of it, isn't it? Yes, it is. Of course, the quest is always for zero. Right. But I would, yes, the continual down draw, um, down slope is always a success story. And looking at the aircraft you have at, at J-Bear, the F-22, pretty good, pretty doggone good record. Yes. Um, one fatality a few years ago back yes. up in the range. Um, and one C-17. Yes. That's pretty good, though. That is. So, what do you think the reasons for, for that dramatic improvement over the years? Well, I think, at least in my time in the Air Force, we've take, the Air Force has taken a solid look at safety. We have the Safety Center, and they do a lot of trend analysis. Um, over the past three months, I've really dug deep and see what they analyze, what they're looking at. And just for the C-17 community, over the past 10 to 15 years, with the systems, the computer system we have on board now, they can really dig in and take download data from flights and analyze trends across all airframes. So we can look at the C-17 community writ large, the KC-135 community writ large, and they can look and be like, they can drill down to approaches and be like, across the C-17 community, 2% of all approaches are flown slow, you know, below mm. approach speed. You know, 10% are... I'm going to have to interrupt okay. you. Okay. I've run out of time. That's probably my fault. Here's what I want to do. Can I get you on a couple more times? Of course. Because I want you... We, let's pick it up right there. Okay. And then I want to really talk about crew risk because you've got yes. some very good ideas on crew risk I think people will appreciate. Right. Thank you for being on the program tonight. No problem. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed tonight's program. Tune in next time. Uh, Linda will be back on. And in, in the meantime, fly safe. Welcome back. Well, Sea Ice, we've been talking about uh, extending from Point Franklin back to the west-northwest of Barrow for quite some time. Those westerly winds they had over the weekend pushed it right into the area here and up along the coast today. Uh, kind of a, quite an increase here from uh, several days ago. And then looking at the analysis for today, the next frame here, still uh, showing what we've been seeing. Gosh, seems like through most of the summer here, this area just in place. And again, that's uh, down to the coast from Point Franklin on up to Barron. And this area kind of streaming eastward in the forecast. Not much change with the uh, wind conditions. This may take a uh, little bit more of a turn to the northeast, but otherwise uh, don't look for a lot of change over the next several days. Moving on to the southeast uh, forecast for southeast uh, coast wind forecast. Pretty light uh, west to northwest, 10 to 15 knots south up here on the north side. South 20 knots from the Lincoln Canal, otherwise northwest 10 to 15 for Wednesday uh, for the area. And then we bring the gales in during the afternoon here. 40 to 45 knots out of the south-southeast here, coming down to 30 knots on the south coast. Staying light over the inside waters, but uh, northern Lincoln Canal picking up 25 knots in the afternoon. Prince William Sound uh, for the next graphic here, showing uh, winds uh, beginning to increase tomorrow afternoon there for the uh, Prince William Sound area, as well as the uh, North Gulf Coast coming up to small craft advisories all through this area. Storm force winds, storm warnings out for the east side of Kodiak Island, full gales here from the Barrens right up in Kamishak Bay, spreading into southern Cook Inlet. And for Wednesday, uh, the next day there, 
Storms, uh, big storms, southeast 60 knots, Prince William Sound, 17 foot seas, 55 knots on the North Gulf Coast with 23 foot seas. Back to small craft advisories, Kodiak Island and 20 to 30 knot winds there for Cook Inlet. Out west for Bristol Bay. For tomorrow, small craft advisories, gales here, southwest of Kodiak Island, diminishing late in the afternoon, uh, possibly. But anyway, back across the Alaska Peninsula, 20 to 25 knots. And then for Wednesday, uh, the winds come down southwest, 20 knots across the entire area there, seas running 6 to 10 feet. And out to the Aleutians, small craft advisories for the Fox Islands, southwest winds, westerlies, 25 to 30 knots there for everywhere else, 11 to 13 foot seas. And up to the southwest coast, uh, or I'm sorry, for Wednesday, <laughs> No change really, uh, small craft advisories, westerly winds, uh, seas running 8 to uh, 13 feet. And then for the southwest coast, uh, small craft advisories here north of Nunavak Island, back across St. Matthew Island, southwest 30 for the Privilofs. And then for Wednesday for this area, lighter winds north coming up to 25, otherwise uh, south 25 there along the southwest coast. Up along the Arctic coast, on the east side, southerlies at about 20 knots, seas 4 to 5 foot seas, central coast, southwest 15, picking up 20 knots here on the west side, and small craft advisories from Wales up to Cape Beaufort, uh, south 25 knots. And then those lighten up and change direction east-northeast here along the uh, western areas to the central coast, a little more east-southeast, but all at 15 knots across the entire zones. For uh, tonight, front pushes inland, increasing winds and rain coming along with it. Kodiak Island through the western interior all the way up to the eastern Arctic coast. And for tomorrow, that uh, system advances. Uh, this low develops, tracks northward, big winds and heavy rain. Kodiak Island sliding up uh, along the Alaska Range. That moves eastward tomorrow night for the high wind warning out for south central Alaska. Pushes eastward uh, the next day along the eastern North Gulf Coast with rain and wind coming down for south central Alaska with possible clearing down Kodiak Island, rain through the Tanana Valley areas and more showery conditions back to the water. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. My job is to find a way to say something really essential so that you come out of your car or you take out your earphones and you know a little bit more about what's happening around you. Welcome to Alaska Edition. I'm your host, Zachariah Hughes. My favorite part of my job is seeing these new things and getting to spend a big chunk of time pulling in numbers and a bunch of sound from different places and making a mess. And then at the end, having this neat, clean radio story that takes you someplace else.